G'day Greyhound fans, I'm Mark Duclos. Welcome along to this week's edition of Behind the Box. So I'll tell you what, we've got a bumper show coming up for you because the 2022 Ladbrokes Golden Easter Egg Series kicks off this Saturday evening at Webworth Park with 10 Heats. Joining me as always, the battler, Timmy Newbell. Hey, Timmy, another week in Greyhound Racing in New South Wales, another massive announcement. We now have the world's richest short course race. It's called the Thunderbolt. Uh, he's to be staged at eight different tracks around New South Wales, semi-finals and finals to be held at Grafton in early and mid-June. Yeah, isn't it great to see, Duke? Now, uh, all distances are catered for with that announcement earlier this week. Sensational news. I know it's been well-received right around the industry. New South Wales, who would have thought oh. five or six years ago we've got the richest race uh, over every distance in the world here in this state. Fantastic news. And I'll tell you what, one uh, final night will be a, a belter at Grafton on, on June 19. But what about semi-final night, which will be on June 11? We've also got the final of the 7.15 at the Gardens on that particular night. So that won't that be one, one hell of a night sitting back at home or if you're on at, at either track, uh, Champagne Greyhound Racing in Newcastle and Grafton. Gee, we've got an exciting few months ahead, Jude. And you know what, Timmy? I think it's just reward. There's a lot of knockers out there about 300-metre races and 350-metre races. They make up more than 30% of our race fields now, right? you still got to get up and feed them. You st it still costs the same amount. Um, there are some people that say should be racing for kibble. I'll tell you what, we get the same product fees for a 300-metre race, what we do for a 500. And punters... They get paid the same as well, $75,000 going to the winner. But for us as an organisation, as you said, the world's richest race in every category as far as, you know, sprint, middle distance, long distance, short course concern. Uh, the previous richest uh, short course races were the Group 1 Galaxy and the Railway Sprint in New Zealand, 25000 New Zealand to the winner. Here we are offering up 75000 Hey, we did Dubbo last week. We'll talk about that in a second, but... What about Paul Braddon with his team of sprinters? Do you reckon Paul and Pam are just being asked, oh, oh, how good's this? Hey, Duke, there's one thing you can be rest assured. There will not be an issue with nomination oh. at any of the tracks for any of the heats. So, uh, yeah, it is. Pam and, and Paul, they'll be, uh, they'll, how many, you wouldn't know how many greyhounds they'll be entering in. The, they might have to strategically uh, place their, their, their greyhounds in their kennel and, and pick and choose where they go. So, even that. Duke adds another little element to similar to the million dollar chase. Where are you going to go to try and qualify for the semi-finals? So those bigger kennels who have got a number of greyhounds over the uh, the shorter trip, yeah, they'll they'll be looking to to strategically place where they'll go. So yeah, it's 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 great to see, and I think everyone's up and about about the race. You know, you, you do get your narks and knockers out there. Oh, why they're, every, they're on every corner, yeah, Timmy. Why don't you put you know seven races on for ten thousand of the winner and that? But you've got to have something to strive for an you know and, a, and a, a big carrot for one of those big races and it puts the race up in in in, in the spotlight Duke. and that's what it's all about we've got a, a lot of, you know all of our bread and butter races very very important clearly but you do need these these bigger races for anyone you know coming into the industry they go well i want to win a million dollar chase or i want to win a 715 you know even if you're going to win a thunderbolt thunderbolt seventy five thousand, you you know great prize money Hey, it's it's incredible. I, I remember racing for forty dollars at Lithgow over the two eighty seven. We thought we'd do it then. Heats kick off uh, Friday twenty seventh of May at Wagga. Then we go to Gunnedah, Bulleye, Richmond, Goulburn, Grafton, Bathurst, and Gosford. Uh, semis, as you said, Timmy, on the eleventh, the same night as the final of the seven fifteen, and the seventy five thousand dollar to the winner of the Thunderbolt final will be staged on the nineteenth of June. All right, let's talk about Dubbo. One of the biggest crowds we've seen on a provincial racetrack or country racetrack or city racetrack uh, for a number of years. Firstly, congratulations to the Dubbo Greyhound Club, to Shane Steffi's committee, all his volunteers and that. But let's talk about the race. Uh, and zipping Kyrgios off box one, there are a couple of different scenarios about where he was going to end up. The King showed his true colours, but that one. Yeah, he did. He got into a nice position early and then he just hooked wide down the back straight and that big V8 engine kicked in. He wound up, forged to the top, coming to the home turn. It was game over in that point. He'd been runner-up at his two runs over the middle journey prior. Uh, 
He was a little unlucky in the semi-final, but he bounced back and well, he went one better in the final. Uh, great training performance, John and Minnie Finn. Uh, he is just an out-and-out uh, superb chaser, Duke. Um, he does it over the 500 at Woodworth Park. He's won the, the Gosford Cup, the, the Gardens, uh, the Blacktop of the Gardens. And now he's added the Country Classic to, uh, to that uh, resume. Just a, a, a tremendous chaser. And now he heads toward, toward the uh, Golden Easter Egg. And it'll be a brave man to suggest he, he won't be able to come back from 600 to, uh, to run, a, you know, run a big race come Saturday night in, in, uh, in the heat of the egg. Uh, we had our showcase presentation that went out. Uh, we had viewers from uh, Fiji Battler, as you're aware, <laughs> uh, Scotland, Dubai. We had them from so many different countries. We were able to sort of capture the excitement, but there was nothing mm. like being on oh, course. Okay. I spoke to Minnie and John on, on Monday morning, actually, they were heading to Dapto to trial. And Minnie said to me, she said, seriously, Duke, it was just like the old days. The, the mm. excitement on course, the buzz that was around. Shannon Noel apparently brained them. Um, and I think we're looking to book him, you know, for wherever the next big gig is. But um, he really, he really resonated with Greyhound fans, particularly in that region. That, um, and you only had to see the look on what I nicknamed her now, Queen Minnie. She thanked very much for that. <laughs> She's Queen Minnie's face. Like <laughs> um, when she was walking down the home straight, uh, her and Cam, uh, Helena, it was a massive night, mate. 125 to the winner. Yeah, it was, Duke, and. You and I were both in that in the Sydney studio uh, heading up the coverage. And I've got to say, I did wish I was a dubbo. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the atmosphere, I was jealous of everyone there because there's not too often you, you, you're sitting back. And, you know, we, we've been going to race meetings all of our lives. And, you know, you go to the run-of-the-mill race meetings and normal meetings. Yeah, they're good, you know. But when you get to those big nights, and even some big nights don't get to that type of atmosphere. and and But sitting back, watching like you're jealous it was one you wanted to be part of it and that's what you i i don't i i, I spoke to stiffy on monday i think it was and he, he said he fielded that many calls from people who basically were in a similar boat and said well i'm going to book i'm coming out next year you know when, when the race is on i'm going to oh well if if it is held at double again I, I want to come out and be a part of that and that's how i felt sitting in the studio you know you, you just there's not often you get a, an atmosphere like that on, on a racetrack in this day and age. And we all know why due to the, the coverage. You can, you've got the coverage uh, from Sky or now through streaming like we do. It's easy to sit at home and not go to the racetrack. But I'll tell you what, if you, if, if you don't want to get to, to, to a track with an atmosphere like that, geez, you need to check your pulse. You're probably in the, in the wrong game because, uh, yeah, as I said, I, I would have loved to have been there. Uh, Monday evening, uh, Group 2 Maitland Gold Cup hasn't good odds cash come back. She's already qualified for the semifinals uh, of the Million Dollar Chase, our first Million Dollar Chase to be staged in May. Uh, she ran second behind Sipping Lopez in the fastest heat Monday week back. She got that perfect sit. She just pressured Mitchell Street from when they jumped to the home turn and he capitulated and she went straight past it. Very, very good training performance from Frank and Tracy Hurst. Spot on, 24.85. We actually chatted oh, well, we chatted about her on this show a number of times, but even when she won the New South Wales uh, sprint last year and got that automatic uh, ticket into the semifinals of the Million Dollar Chase, we said at the time, this is going to be a damn good training performance to keep her uh, you know, up come this time this year. Uh, she's had a little break here and there. And as you mentioned, she's come back and had a cut. That was her second run back from a, a couple of months off. And she's come back in fine, fine fettle. Gee, she was outstanding. Uh, the run of the, uh, the second Greyhound, our mechanic for Jason McKay, it was huge. He was at last early weaving way through and uh, he, he was gallant in finishing second. Um, and I know he's going toward the Golden Easter Egg this, this week, but yeah, he, he's a greyhound. I think he's better suited on those big one-turn tracks, but yeah, he's a greyhound who, who could easily, you know, um, compete at the, the, the top level on the big one-turn tracks. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs at Woodworth Park come Saturday night. But yeah, all honours to good odds cash. As you mentioned, a great, great training performance. She draws six on Saturday night. We'll talk about that. She's up against uh, New South Wales Premier Sprinter. She's a pearl. Now, listen to me. I, I don't care whether you run it at Galarganbone, Narrabri, or I went with Park. When you run a track record, it's, an, it's a, you know, a terrific achievement. When you smash, and I mean literally smash a track record by five tenths, as Zipping Kansas did at Bulleye on Tuesday afternoon, 
you made that statement on Saturday night. I'm not going to hold you to it, but you you said he could be the best day you've ever seen. He um, could be. He beat he beat Stanley Road, Timmy, a dual group one with him by 15 lengths. Yeah, look, uh, I've got no doubt he's he's the quickest stayer I've ever seen. Whether he ends up the best is, you know, time will only tell. But what he's done in those three runs, oh, well, prior, even prior to that, when he ran the near track record at, at, at Richmond, um, so one well, of his last four runs, you know, Wentworth Park 41 5 first up, then Sandow, outstanding. And he absolutely obliterated that track record on Tuesday. I know it was in daylight conditions. So uh, the track Still was conducive to, to quick times, yeah. But, but he left poor old Stanley Road in his wake. Uh, as you said, 15 lengths behind. Um, gee, uh, <laughs> the, the the world is at his feet. He is he is just something out of the box. He really is. Whether that that brilliance early, Duke, uh, you know, gets uh, you know at, uh, at a bit, yeah, 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 yeah. As he as he sort of has more runs over the journey, but I'm sure you know, Jason Magri. He's a top trainer. He, he'll know how to how to prepare and and tie and you know space his races if he thinks that'll ever come. But the thing is with him, you know, we've we've always you know the great stayers over the years. Many of them are back markers. Well, this guy he's just a front running stayer, just runs them into the ground. So he wins his races when he, if he begins cleanly, he's basically unleadable. And that middle uh, section where he just absolutely puts them away. How can they run him down if he if he continues in in the, the form he is in? He is just yeah, he is something special. You know, and it's great to see. I think we we need a real headline act act at the moment, Duke. And he could well be the greyhound coming through because we've had a lot of retirements um, in the last sort of twelve months. You know, the Tommy Shelby's even Aston Rupee uh, retired uh, earlier earlier this or earlier today. So um, we're looking for a real big name and Zipping Kansas. He could be the one. Uh, of course, he goes into the Association Cup heats on Saturday week. I wonder how many interstate dogs or interstate trainers he scared off by those last three or four performances. I wonder if they're game enough to go, you know what, are we, how do we beat him? Or do they say, hey, we're in it. You can't win races sitting at home. Hey, and hey, second and third prize money is pretty good as well. You know, if you yeah, look, you've always. You, you, I don't think any trainer would really go into a race saying, "Oh, we," you know, you know what you've got to beat, but you can't can't have that attitude. You have got to have a crack, in my opinion. And and even even if you can't beat him, as I said, second and third's pretty good prize money. Who wouldn't want to be a gold on Easter egg night anyway? Come oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean it's a two week uh, series. Yeah, so yeah, it's not, uh, they don't have to make that three week trip like they do for the sprinters. We're probably only going to get three heats, maybe. Yeah, probably. Um, you know, so they've only got to run. You know. One, two, two yeah. faster thirds. They're in there for a crack at, you know, yeah. decent money, even if he does go to that next level, Timmy. Yeah. Um, so it's really, you know, it's interesting. I'll tell you what, Jason's on a, he's on a roll, Jay Magri. Uh, last night at Wentworth Park, we had five heats of the Group 3 Magic Maiden Series. It's the unofficial start to the Easter Egg Series. Uh, he had the fastest qualifier, Zibbing Novak, in 30 and 04. Yeah, straight to the top. Didn't look... Uh ever like getting beat 555 18 dead 1204 04 overall had box one just looked uh, like a professional dog didn't he? he's only you know only a young dog and uh looked like he'd been around Wentworth park a dozen times uh yeah he's going to be a big big player in the series um he was clearly the most impressive duke you know he had his he had box one but you know it, the, these these uh series you know a lot of the time they are Box draw dependent with the young dogs and just learning their way coming through. But yeah, he, he he's he's another who uh, is highly talented at another one for Marty and Fiona Helen. And so they're having one heck of a run as well at the moment, Chuk. And deservedly. So hey, we got semi-finals of the Magic Maiden uh next Wednesday night. And then uh, those semi-qualifiers, they go into the final on Golden Easter Egg night on April the 9th. Let's talk about Ladbroke's Golden Easter Egg Heats. Uh, we have 10 of them this Saturday evening. Uh, scratching of Aston Rupee from race two robs the race of a little bit of interest, but notwithstanding that, it's an absolute, some cracking fields. Uh, the first heat, Timmy, uh, group one winner, do it, draws box five. I'm keen on Chase Me Honey. I thought her recent form's been outstanding. She does have to miss Mitchell Street in the early stages. Um, Yuko Girl parked up in box one. I'll tell you the smoky for me is where's Rocky. Uh, he, he looks as if he's going to get a really nice draw. Um, 
Where's Rocky for me from probably Chase Me Honey Do It. Uh, really tough race to kick off proceedings. I'm with the uh, class edge here in, in Do It. Uh, Adelaide, Adelaide Cup winner. He, he, he was terrific through the in the heat of the pause of thunder uh, earlier on in the year with Park. He's got the box manners, the early pace to overcome. Uh, the Five Alley uh, coming into the race, Duke on the uh, fresher side. Uh, so I think he'll be ready to rock and roll. I do concur with where's Rocky. He's got a tremendous chance from that soft alley. He's drawn yep. to park just behind the pace and he's powerful at the end. Very, very strong greyhound. He's, he's a, he's a top chance, but I, I'm in the corner and uh, I'll do it in the opener. All right. Race two early start on Saturday night two, by the way, six Oh five for the first race two goes at six twenty two. Aston Rupee. As I said, he's been scratched. He's been retired. Uh, we're with the wings here, both of us, Timmy, but we have, you know, conflicting numbers. I've gone with analysing uh, from box number one. I think you're with Irinka Riley. Yeah, I sure am, Duke. Look, I, I concede Irinka Riley's better drawn nearer to the rails in one, two, three, but he can handle a wide alley. He did run 29.78, winning a heat of the Pools of Thunder in January from box eight. He's got a speedy wide run, uh, a speedy railer, I should say, in Dulceria drawn directly underneath him here. If she fires out, charges over, I can see Irinka Riley getting a beautiful card across with her. Park on just behind the pace in analysing and Dulceria working into the back straight. And I think he could be too strong at the end. Irinka Riley for me. All right, analysing for me off the inside, tons of early pace. Uh, Four-time winner at Wenny with six minors. Go back two starts, uh, thirty and zero on a dead track. Previous start ran twenty nine eight. But uh, yeah, I'm with you, Timmy. I think I think the wings hold the key to race number two, the second heat. Uh, the third heat at Wenty. I uh, spoke with Andy Lord and Jody Lord this morning. Uh, Andy just loves Bandit Net. I mean, you look at his record from outside boxes. It, it is absolutely exemplary. We know he's a Group One age restricted winner at Wentworth Park. Drops back from that 600 metre semi final of the country classy, but he loves Wenny. And Andy said today he, he roared up his home, uh, up the uh, straight at home there uh, earlier this week. Yeah, you're right. He, he's, he's, when he parks his favourite track, his best track. Um, good record from Wide Alley's uh, flying PB at the track. Shouldn't be worried by the two greyhounds drawn on either side as well in Murray's way and Sound of Silence, who's directly underneath him. He should get that fresh air to build up the revs in the early stages, let go mid-race and down the back straight. And he should be in front of Equaliser if he does begin cleanly. And therefore, I think he'll win the race. Equaliser, the danger, uh, the market does suggest that Duke, it's only two winning chances, according to the market. If there is a knockout for mine, it would be Das Ascend Greyhound, eh, who could charge across and maybe get the fly. But yeah, I, I, I'm in uh, I'm in the corner of Bandit Ned here. Full semi-final, fantastic Raven will start from box five. She was terrific at Dubbo when she led them up in the country classic final. Uh, we're both in a grand here, Timmy. Connections resumed after a two-month spell at the Gardens of last, uh, last week, ran 29.47, an imposing record today. 12 starts for 10 wins and at 24 starts for a couple of victories. 29.68 best. Uh, he's won two of three starts from the outside two boxes. Yeah, he's a dead set box eight band, a juke, flying machine in the early stages. Quick winner at the Gardens on resumption last start. Ran a blinding 492 early section. They don't go much quicker than that at the Gardens. Uh, I think he'll just charge across, go to the top, run his rivals into the ground. Fantastic Raven, you know, a, a big, big danger. And Zyra's Ivan, but... I think Connections will win the race mid-race when he does set up a big lead. He'll get leg weary in the latter stages, but I think he's drawn to lead and set up a big lead. Uh, first leg of the quad is race five, the fifth heat of the Labrakes Golden Easter Egg Series. Coast Model draws one. Group one winner, Wow, draws two. Ties the bind, uh, draws box number eight. Idolise, the group one national futurity winner, uh, draws box number seven. Wow, he's had three weeks off since his last run here at Wenny where he scored in a free-for-all in 29.79. And we've spoken about him so many times, but like he loves to get off the track, but his record from inside boxes is, is terrific. Yeah, and it just depends on the type of race, the race, you know, structure and, and, and how Greyhounds are, uh, how the Greyhounds around him are drawn. And in this particular race, Duke, Greyhound 3, Indy for Do, 
or Fidu, the the Victorian. You go back and have a look at his runs in Victoria. He comes out like a dromedary. He walks out of the boxes. So and the red flies out. Yeah. That's right. So Coast Model will ping lead. White walks out. Wow just begins on terms, and then he'll just that motor will kick in. He'll get rolling, and I can see him just holding second or third through the first turn behind the red. And then he just lets go mid-race. Uh, yeah, I've got to be with him. Wow. Um, after a, after a redemption, after finishing, finishing runner-up to Tommy Shelby in last year's Golden Easter Egg, idolise logical danger. She was fantastic in both victories at Weddy uh, earlier on in the year. And uh, she's a little lid pinger. Uh, and uh, I'm sure she'll be cherry ripe for the series. All right. Race number six, the sixth feet of the Golden Easter Egg. Uh, Lewis Rumble Battler, he's had a couple of runs back. He had around about four weeks off, went to Grafton in a 350, got beat by a very smart local dog there in Apache Don. Uh, last Sunday night ran 25-19. Uh, that was a hot win because it was a very good, as say, local field. Greyhounds that race there every week. Only had the three starts and went in for a win, a best of 29-61. Won 25 of 50 overall, class animal. Yeah, best bet on the program from me. But he is at a, at a rock bottom price in early betting around the $1.90. I'd like even money or a little bit better. Uh, look, when he begins cleanly, there's not too many greyhounds who have got the burn he's got in this country. I like him when he's drawn wide out where he can just get momentum and charge over. Uh, he, he's got a couple of greyhounds around him. He shouldn't really worry him if he begins cleanly. Uh, you've mentioned his PB, clearly the one to beat. Best bet on the program, Lewis Rumble. Any danger at all. Probably Indy Matilda got a terrific record off box one. Uh, Ten starts, seven wins, a couple of minors. Uh, its last victory was back in early January. It went 29-27. Mm. Uh, and again, Team Daly bring a huge contingent to Wentworth Park. Yeah, they always come up, the Hume. And, you know, I know over the years I've always gambled against a lot of their greyhounds first up because they don't generally come up and trial Duke. And I've ended up with egg on my face a number of times. They generally always come up and perform very well at Wentworth Park first up. Although Indy Matilda has been at Weddy before, uh, has had a couple of runs here, but there are a number of dailies up here this, this week first up. But yeah, drawing the inside uh, is, is the main danger. All right, race number seven, cracking heat of the Golden Easter Egg and New South Wales Premier Sprinter, She's a Pearl draws box number eight. Uh, 13 starts at the track, 10 wins, four for four, from the outside, she, uh, good odds cash, as we mentioned earlier, a very smart winner of the Maitland Cup on Monday night. But I, again, I spoke to Jody this morning and, and she just said that she's a pearl, is absolutely at the top of the game. I was at Wenny two weeks back uh, on the Wednesday night. She ran 5.39 early. That track was at least three or four tenths off Battler. She went 29.82. Uh, she's got a, a best here of 46. Can you see her, firstly, getting led by any other dog in the field? and can you see her getting beat? Brave me to tip against her. Uh, I'm not that brave. Uh, no, neither am I. <laughs> no, I don't no. want to get on Jody's bad side. No. <laughs> no, she should just win. Um, she'll go out round at a, a good things price around the dollar thirty, dollar thirty five. She lid pings. She's got that incredible burn. She looks to be getting you know just uh, stronger and stronger. She's improving those overall times. Um, box eight should just lead and win one for the multis. She. I, the way I look at it, Timmy, she's, and I, you know, I don't do a lot of interstate form now, but as far as New South Wales dogs are concerned, she's without a doubt the best 520 metre beginner in New South Wales, hands down. I, I, I don't know another dog that, that is as faultless as what she is. Um, she just, mm. again, and I've spoken to Andy about this, they're the sort of dogs you, you know, that they, they give themselves every opportunity. Yeah. Uh, to, to win their way through to a semi, win their way through to a final. They're coming out running and going 530s, 538s, 540s. Boy, how, you know, they're getting that clear air, mate. Yeah, they're unleadable when you're running those low 530s. And then you're running the quick time mid-race and you're getting home uh, in, in handy time as well. Mathematically impossible to really run you down. So uh, she's the series favourite and deservedly so. Uh, she looks to have a... Uh, a mortgage on this heat on Saturday night should get through to semi-final stage and uh, she'll be awfully hard to beat. Those racing traits, are, as we've harped on it many a times, you know, I'd always, I'd love, I, as far as a, a greyhound's concerned, I want a good beginner 
high speed and can run quick time over 520. Tick, Dude. tick, tick. She's a pearl. I don't want to back mark her and one out, you run 29, you know, three, one out at Wentworth Park and you got no speed and you're strong. I just want to lead ping a speed, run your 29 fives each, each time you go around and you're going to win a lot of races and probably a big one along the way. How do you go at Christmas time with Santa Claus? Is that the same sort of thing you ask for? Just <laughs> something to get off the shelf? And, yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't come to me anymore. Oh, I'm generally good. Santa. <laughs> I'm going to play Santa now. You know, anyway, it's a hell of a lot more costly these days. <laughs> You've gone race, through all that. Oh, mate, <laughs> Still in. Uh, race eight, uh, last leg of the quaddy, eight feet of the golden Easter egg. The king. Returns to Wente. Uh, we spoke about him earlier winning the, the uh, Country Classic at Dubbo. His record here is outstanding. 23 starts, 12 wins, 7 minus, 29.37 PB here. Came from box two. I know you don't place as much relevant on boxes as I, I possibly do. And, and you're right, because it depends on the race they're in. But I still like to see him have good records from boxes. Uh, box two, uh, seven starts, five wins, a couple of minus. Uh, can he get beat? I, I, well, he can because he's been beaten at, <laughs> at you know, a dollar and ten there before when I had him as the last leg of a malt. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was off the red that night, remember? Yeah, I do remember. Yeah. Um, just another one to add to the book. Yeah. <laughs> another chapter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, I can't tip against him. Um, coming back from the middle journey, that won't be a worry. He would have had an easy week, no doubt was when he park a bit of pace on his outside but not much on, he, on his inside so he should just punch up settle second or third in the run and then he lets go um he should just win uh look i, I don't know whether i want to take a dollar 70 about him but um he should get the money due i think he'll uh he'll probably start a lot shorter than that they came for him late as you know on mm. saturday night at dubbo he's got a big fan base which is great uh race nine ninth heat um the scratching already of your namesake, Rockstar Newball. What happened? You pulled up late, <laughs> did you? I'll tell you what, they're shooting for the stars. <laughs> Kayla and Sean, when I saw him, and I thought, gee, yeah. man, just, just try and win a fifth grade, eh, yeah, Kayla? Yeah, up with the red. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In a goal uh, goal I like three. Lila Kiwi. Uh, group one Australian Cup winner. Uh, she, she ran 29-6 in a uh, heat of the Perth Cup, uh, only two starts back. Got beat in the final of that. Um, she's got a slow beginner on her outside in zipping Alabama. Boston Garden, well, good luck trying to work out his box manners. I know if he does begin, Wenty's probably the one track he does begin at. Um, so I re I'm keen on Lala Kiwi, just even though she's got box four. She's actually my best bet of the night. But you like another Andrea Daly trainer here in Americano Miss. Yeah, I thought she uh, arrives in Sydney for the first time with pretty good form. She's been racing really well. Uh, on the provincial tracks at Horsham and, and Shepparton uh, down there. Has won at the Meadows in quick time, has shown good speed. I think she'll be suited to Woodworth Park. I think she'll love the track. Boston Garden on her outside, well, who, who knows how he begins? <laughs> who knows? Good luck. It's guesswork, but if he walks out like he generally does, now got a vacant box underneath her. Gee, she's a great chance of leading here um, at, a, at a good price. I think she's worth a gamble. Americano miss, even on an each-way basis. Uh, I think she can go straight at the top. Lala Kiwi, clearly the one to beat the class runner. A uh, bit of travelling last couple of, what you know, coming back from Perth. That might, you know, I don't know whether I'd want to take, you know, uh, tomato sauce odds about her with just coming back from Perth or coming to Sydney for the first time from Perth, but uh, or second time, I should say. But, yeah, I, I thought she might have been a little bit of a risk from uh, of all of the all of the skinny, skinny favourites on Saturday night, Duke. So a bit of value, Americano Miss. All right, 10th and final heat. I'm, uh, I'm with Jason Thompson here with Decimate from the outside. Good record from wide boxes. Um, good recent stats. A, a winner at Warrnambool a couple of stars back. Last start winner at Warrigal. Uh, it's been racing in free-for-alls at... Uh, Sandown Park ran second there, three starts back on 29-3 when the winner went uh, 29-02. Timmy, who are you with in last heat? Yeah, the Daily Camp again here in Gypsy Yankee. Uh, first Haven't you jumped Sydney? on board? I know. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> I'll That's be got empty pocket me. stitches here. Yeah. Hey? They'll be cursing me. Don't worry about that. Um, he's another grey hand who comes up here and I think could be just suited to Wentworth Park. Uh, with his racing traits, uh, goes around around the eight dollar mark. Been going around at Horsham and Shepparton in, in the the Cup Series at both of those tracks. Um, 
has got a moderate beginner drawn on his outside and, and decimate in the eight. Gee, he's very touchy. I know he, he does want box eight because when he does hit the ground, that's when he really gets mobile. Uh, but I thought at the value, um, Gypsy uh, Yankee was a great little chance in, in the final heat, Duke. Uh, Fernando Hunter a chance as well, but uh, we talk about risky beginners. Oh. Um, look in the dictionary and there's a picture of that big blue dog. Definitely. No doubting his ability. No, Absolute machine when he gets clear mm. air, uh, as was evident, what, four starts back, yeah. running 29.56. And Brenton Abdullah, of course, who owns it, he's riding the crest of a winning wave, taking out the golden slipper last week. Yeah, sure is. Look, he, he's got an undeniable chance, but he just he just hasn't got that early dash uh, in the first 50 or 60, and he's so, so touchy at box rides. But if he gets fresh air going into the back straight, the leaders better look, up, look out because... God almighty, he's got a massive, massive engine. And, you know, we know he can put the time on the board when when the right, when the the right runs come his way mid-race. Uh, first, second and third of each of the heats go through to the semis, along with the two fastest force. And you talk about Team Daly, uh, Timmy and, and Tommy and Andrea and George, they've been doing this for years, right? Mm. They bring a team up. Um, they, look, I, I know they want to win every time they go around. But they also look at the heats. When it's a three-week series like this, they can bring dogs up um, that have not had a look at the track and and hope to run one, two, three and get through. And and it's a, a as you said before, it's a proven recipe. With, with yeah. them. they've been doing it for years. For years, it took me it took me a long time to actually get around it and work out not to to gamble against them that first week generally. But um, yeah, it, it's a proven. It's been proven in the past, and no doubt they're going to, to play a big part again in this uh, this series. Yep. Okay. So that is Saturday evening at Wentworth Park. Uh, we kick off the Ladbrokes 2022 Golden Easter Egg Series. Hey, the good news, the big announcements, they all keep coming. It's going to be a cracking week. Um, and as I said, next Wednesday night, semifinals of the Magic Maiden as well. And then Saturday week, we've got the Group 1 Association Cup heats. Have a good uh, have a good week, mate. I'll be trackside at Wendy on Saturday night doing socials, so you can catch up on all the action there. But boy, what what a what a couple of months we got coming up, Atlan. Easter egg, <laughs> million dollar chase, seven fifteen, Thunderbolt. Are there any other race? What about the richest straight track race in the world? How much yes, is that cost us? Yeah, yeah, I did uh, I did see a little bit of talk about that on the socials. Well, that could be uh, could be the next. Tony Mestrop, are you there? Who knows? <laughs> I'm in the studios here at JR NSW. I'll just tuck upstairs and tap on yourself. Hey, mate, good to be back. Good to see you. And uh, hopefully we've got plenty of winners throughout the week. Thanks, Duke. Been a lot of fun. All right. And to you as well, good luck. I hope you've enjoyed Behind the Boxes. We'll be back same time next week. But don't forget, huge night of racing at Wentworth Park this Saturday night. Ten heats of the Labrokes Golden Easter Egg Series. Mm -hmm.